Howdy folks, BC here. You're watching BC's Deuce and Guns. Today I'm going to be talking about SKS rifles. Namely, make sure it's clear, namely the fear that people have when you talk about slam fires. There's even an industry out there where you can actually buy a specialized firing pin that includes a spring in it to return so you don't run the risk of a slam fire because of the free floating fire pin. There's no spring in that. You shake it back and forth. Ideally, if it's in good shape, the fire pin should flop back and forth. Thus, it's a free floating fire pin and people are afraid that that fire pin, when it chambers a new round, that the fire pin is going to have enough heft to actually ignite the primer and start a chain reaction where you're going full auto when you don't mean to and when your trigger is not pulled down. So I'm going to take a look at that and see if that's actually a risk or not. First of all, let's look at the actual use of the free floating fire pin. Not only, again, this is the SKS bolt, not only was it in the SKS, the Soviets also use it in their ever reliable AK-47. This is the bolt out of an AK-47. That's the actual click of the firing pin rattling back and forth. There's no spring in that. And that's the ever reliable AK-47. Behind me are three US rifles that also utilize the free floating firing pin. Here's the M16 um, Air 15 variant. Here's the bolt carrier and the actual bolt. There's the firing pin. It goes into the bolt. There is no spring at all. It just slides right out. Same thing with the M14 and the M1 Garand rifle. Here's the bolt out of the Garand rifle there and you can hear that is the sound of the firing pin rattling back and forth. When you chamber around a 30 out 6 that firing pin does come in contact with the actual primer. Not hard enough to, to set it off, but it does come in contact. And you can actually see a little tiny dimple where it has made contact. So let's see why, let's look at why people are afraid of the SKS, but would not hesitate to grab a Garin, a M14, M16, whatever, and start just blasting away. Let's take a look at that. I think one of the reasons why people are afraid of the SKS free floating firing pin versus M16, M14, M1, Garin, AK-47, all those things, is because these were imported completely filled with junk and cosmoline and dried on grit and dirt. This is my SKS that's from China. It's a Chinese SKS. It looks like it's been drugged behind a truck all the way from China to the US. It actually shoots pretty well. And I got it really, really cheap because it was so gunked up, the cosmoline had dried and completely cemented together where the action did not work, the trigger group did not work, and the firing pin was frozen solid. So I had to take it all apart. It took me about three days and almost an entire gallon of paint thinner to completely get everything freed up and working again. So if the SKS firing pin is cemented forward with dried cosmoline and you chamber that round, if that firing pin cannot move backwards against the pressure of that firing pin, you could very well have a runaway chain fire on your hands. So the solution is, even if you're not the first person to buy it from the importer, when you buy an SKS, take apart the bolt, take out the fire pin. It's not an easy job to do, honestly, but it needs to be done and verified that everything is clean and everything is free of dirt and dry cosmoline. And here we have the SKS bolt, and there's your firing pin, you can see. Now we have this firing pin retaining retainer here, and it needs to be removed from this side. It's a very tight fit. Some are worse than others. This is not too bad because I've recently already had it off, but we're gonna go ahead and pound that sucker out. All you need is pretty much a hammer, your good old trusty hammer, and a nail set. This is the largest nail set in a pack of three you get from Stanley. And basically you just pound the crap out of it. Now this one isn't that bad. It's actually moving. There we go. That is out. 
And now let's take the firing pin out. And actually, it's still got a little bit of rust on there. I probably need to take care of that. That is some rust or some dried cosmoline. So I think I'll take a green pad to that and clean it up a little bit. Now, once you've used your green scouring pad and really cleaned off all the rust and residue from the cosmoline, so once you've done that, take a look at the firing pin channel and address to see if that's a concern as well. You just look down at it, it'd be really hard for me to show on the camera, but you can look down and see if it's, it should be fairly like a satin mirror shine inside. And to address that, which it will probably be gunked up as well, you can use brushes for a 22 or a 17 caliber rifle. And if it's not to so bad, you can just soak it really good a couple of nights in paint thinner and then use this. You can tell I've already used this 22 swab for that. It works perfectly. It goes all the way down in there. Now to quickly reassemble the bolt, the firing pin has two completely flat sides. It's a triangular firing pin. And then one side has a little bump on the top. You can see that there. And you want that bump to be forward, the forward part of the firing pin. This is where the magic happens up here. And it's going to be on top. So then it slides right in through there because you can see there's a bump at the top and it goes right in there. And you can see it go through the channel there. You see the firing pin retainer hole. You can see the bump go through there. And that bump is what retains the firing pin after the retainer is pounded back in. And there's nothing fancy about this. You just hammer it in. Now, that's bottomed out. It is good to go. And you can see the firing pin moves freely back and forth with my hand pressure. Well, folks, I hope you liked my little history lesson on the SKS and its free-floating firing pin. Hope you learned a little bit and especially learned the fact that with the proper preparation and cleaning methods, there is nothing to be afraid of in the free-floating firing pin, even in the dreaded SKS. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment box below the video. And remember to like, favorite, and subscribe because I'll be doing a lot more of these in the future. You guys have a great day. Oh, there we go. See ya.